Hey everybody, Mr. Eric here. Welcome back to the channel and to my bedroom. So, gonna be a little bit different review today because I threw my back out like a day ago and uh, have been in some pretty excruciating pain. But I'm, I'm getting better, but this also gives me the opportunity to do a review of a couple of portable DAC amps because obviously there are certain situations, i.e. hurting your back, where you're just not gonna be able to be at your main desktop setup. As much as I enjoy my desktop setup and I have some fun new things down there to play with, uh, so teaser of what's coming, I just, a lot of the times, even before I had my back hurt, I just, I, I like to listen in bed. I like to be at least a little bit mobile when I'm listening in order to, you know, just be able to listen more. So, so what are we using for that? Well, my go-to, ugh, twist a little bit here. My go-to up to this point has been uh, the Cord Mojo here. And I've mentioned it a lot of times. I've got reviews and things of this out. I, I really like this. It's a really super high quality DAC amp. Um, and obviously it's not too big, but you know, you it's still, it's no Bluetooth. So you still have to have a cord hooked up to your mobile device, which can be cumbersome. Um, then I've got the, you know, the FIO VTR5. And I use this quite a bit for Bluetooth, but I also felt like it wasn't, didn't quite have the power and resolution that I really wanted for full size headphones. Although it's a, you know, it, it is a very nice little portable solution. So a um, couple other things I have on hand here is number one is the iFi Nano Black Label which I picked up to try. Obviously this is still a corded solution. So you gotta have, you know, your USB cord and dongle. But um, I picked this up cause it was about a hundred bucks thinking, well, maybe it could compete with the Mojo and I could save a little money there. Uh, spoiler, it doesn't. Um, but then I thought, well, maybe I could use it at work because it does have a preamp out, but that didn't end up working out either. Um, and then Last, but certainly not least, I've been able to pick up the iFi X-Can. And this is an interesting device because it is a DAC amp if you use Bluetooth, but if you want to wire it up, then it's only an amp. Um, and not that you're gonna be able to see this, but maybe I'll be able to cut to some B-roll here, but it has a single, a, a 3.5 single ended in and a 2.5 balanced in, as well as those two options out and um again spoiler alert this i think is going to be my new solution so i actually think this is going to replace the mojo not that it sounds as good um, but just having the portability and the flexibility of bluetooth really makes this thing just about an ideal uh, dac amp for me um, for what i want to do with it so let's let's talk a little bit about each of these devices. Now, this guy, um, like I said, it's Bluetooth. So what, what I really like to do is I've been pairing it a lot with the um, Edition XX here. And I've been using it all, until I hurt my back, I was just using it all over the house. And I had it, you know, I would just slip this down in my pocket. It'd be Bluetooth, my phone, great. I can be in bed. And I don't have my phone because it's recording this, but I can just have this sitting here, headphones plugged in, and I can still scroll with my phone and stuff like that and use it. And that works really well. Or one of my favorite things to do as well is use my Roku TV that's over here in the corner and I can send sound to my phone to use headphones to listen. And then, you know, again, I still have use of my phone I don't have any wires attached to it and I've got my Bluetooth, you know, X can here being used. Now, so there are some sacrifices you have to make with the X can over like the Mojo and the the black label here, the Nano black label. Oh, looks like we've got uh, we've got some friends joining us for our review here. So Sound quality on this thing is actually quite good. I'm just, gonna, I'm just, we're just gonna power through here. Okay, we're just gonna power through. Um, 
sound quality on this I think is quite good. Now, is it as refined and detailed as the Mojo or the sound even from the Nano Black Label? No, I don't think it is. It is a more laid back sound, but it is quite wide. It doesn't quite give like the depth and spatial accuracy as those other two DAC amps do, but it's really quite mellow sound. And so again, when you're doing, when you're thinking about just having headphones on as you or doing dishes or sitting on the deck or you know just kind of chilling in bed and you're not looking for the highest highest fidelity experience this thing does a really nice job um as usual it kind of retains the i-fi you know x base 3d stuff um, again i don't ever really use that stuff but they're there if you want them i think especially you know at least having that bass boost is kind of a nice little nice little thing to have now the other thing that this has that's kind of neat is it has this uh on the x base back here you can kind of change the settings to where you can have bass presence or bass and presence so you can it you have several different frequency response tweaks um when it comes to that so not um a pretty full featured device honestly um, for, for portable listening and still sounds quite good. Um, so let's talk about the black label here real quick. Now, this is definitely like a lower tier device, um, than the Mojo, although still very sturdily built. Both this and the x -Can are very sturdy builds, but you know, they're just, they're not on par with the Mojo. Um, volume pot feels nice on this. It's, it's very smooth. It's about the size of a, uh, it's about the size of like something that's on like a Magni, but it's way smoother. feels way more high quality than that. Now this is weird because it has two 3.5 millimeters on the front and one is regular output and one is an IE match. Um, so that's just, if you think of those as almost like two different gained outputs, one of them you can use with IEMs and, and they're a little bit better controlled. The other one is full on, you know, just regular headphone output. God damn it, cats. Uh, now this guy also has like a little toggle on the back here. And, um, you know, to, speaking of that, I, I'd talk to maybe like, my biggest gripe with this thing is the stickers that are on here that label different things. They're kind of worn over time and they're actually really difficult to read at this point, um, especially if you don't have really good light, but it's basically a filter switch and it's got like measure and listen are your two options. I didn't notice a whole lot of difference between the two, but it's there if you want to play with it. Um, and then you've got a 3.5 out, so you can use this with powered speakers or, you know, you can just send a signal to another device if, if you want to. Um, and that does function, and, but um, the volume knob does not control that, which made it not usable for, for me as far as what I was trying to do with it. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, the sound on this, I would... I would say it is, it resolves better than the X-Can, not as good as the Mojo. It presents space better than the X-Can, again, not as good as the Mojo. So kind of that's where this guy sits is like sound quality wise is it's, it's I would say the fidelity is better than the X-Can, but it, it still doesn't touch the Mojo. The Mojo is just a phenomenal device if you're willing to spend about $300 for something like that. Um, my biggest gripe with this though, is that it was rather finicky when getting it hooked up to my phone. Obviously, in addition to, have to having to deal with dongles and things like that to do it, there seemed to be like a correct order that you would have to get it in to where, you know, you'd turn it on, then you'd plug it into your device and unlock your device. Um, and sometimes I would have to kind of redo that to get the signal to work. I never had any issues like that with the Mojo when I was using it. It just works um, and worked flawlessly and always does. And same with the X-Can. Like, I mean, you just, you push the button and then, you know, it turns on, Bluetooth turns on and then it connects and you're ready to go. Um, the other thing that I really like about the X-Can is this volume dial on here and 
Uh, I just love having a physical volume knob, which the Mojo lacks. And the other thing that I like about this is like the colors are set per volume level. Whereas like on the Mojo, it kind of cycles. So you can't be sure what the volume level is when you have a color on it. With the X-Can, as you spin the volume knob, um, it goes through different gain stages, which is clearly labeled in the manual. So you know where you're at when you're using it, which I appreciate. Um, so where does this put us, uh, put us all at? Well, um, the Nano, while I do, I could see some people liking this device, I thought it sounded a bit dry and just came off a bit harsh compared to the other two DAC amps that I've got here, or even, even compared to the, uh, the little, the little Fio there, BTR5 there. So for me, this is that between the finickiness of it, um, I just, this device isn't for me. So this is going to get, go down the road. Uh, the Mojo, while I do still think it's a phenomenal DAC amp, uh, it's just dealing with the wires. I just, I just don't want that up here when I'm not at my desk. So while I do think this is a phenomenal sounding device, and I honestly think this could really be your one and only if you just want one device to rule them all at your desk when you're on the go, things like that, this would be a possibility, okay? Um, but at $300, it's just, I'm not using it enough to warrant keeping it on hand when I have other stuff down at my desk to use. Because at this point, when I'm on the go, the X-Can is what I'm going to be using. I'm digging the sound. I'm digging the portability of it. I'm digging the, the, even the look and the feel and the volume and all of that. I'm just really enjoying using this device. The only, only, only thing that I don't like about it is it is chrome and gosh, it is just looks disgusting all the time because there are just fingerprints all over it. So um, if this was a matte black, this thing would be it and it would look cool and different. And yeah, it's just, it's a really nice device. And um, again, like all iFi products that I've used, the build is really nice. Um, everything feels nice. All the, the tolerances are all good. I just, I buy products. They just, I don't always agree with the sound of them, like with the Nano here, but you can't deny the thought and um, work that's gone into designing these devices to make them just, just feel good to use. So yeah, for me, I've got a new front runner for portability. Um, and I know even though this is much larger than the BTR5, I still don't mind just slipping this in my pocket. So the BTR5 has seen almost no use since I've gotten this device. And um, to be honest, my 2.5 balance output broke on my BTR5. So I don't know if I'm even going to use it very much. I'll probably just keep it on hand since, you know, since it's broken, it's probably not worth selling either. So maybe for IEMs or something, I'll keep it to, to test out or have a, a comparison. Portable DAC amp anyway. So yeah, iFi X Can. That's my new winner for a portable DAC amp. And uh, I bought mine, I think for like $170. So, you know, keep an eye out. Um, as always, I recommend buying used and uh, maybe you can pick one up for a good deal. So. I hope you enjoyed my bedroom review. Hopefully my back will be feeling better and I can be back at my desk um, sometime soon, in which case I've got, uh, like I said, several, several nice devices down there that are waiting for review. Questions, comments, leave them below. I appreciate you watching and I will see you next week. Now the challenge of actually getting up. Oh, oh man.